Today I'm speaking to Mr. Dinesh Arjun, CEO and co-founder at Rapti HV. So Rapti launched its first electric motorcycle T30 yesterday and this high voltage EV has been launched at an ex showroom price of 2.39 lakhs and the deliveries will start in Chennai and Bangalore starting January 2025. Hi Dinesh, can you briefly uh, discuss the vision and the design thesis behind T30? So, uh for us the goal was to not just make another electric motorcycle or rather take a, an engine out and put an electric motor in and make another electric uh product uh but really understand why electric motorcycle adoption in particular has not been taking i mean has not been g- uh, gaining traction over the last couple of years when you actually look at the industry uh, motorcycles more the motorcycle industry is much larger than the scooter industry however electrification in motorcycles particularly has not really happened so this was essentially our goal we we started out to find an answer to this uh we uh, we we found that the existing architecture that current electric scooters are built on uh had limitations in the fact that it couldn't push more power uh as much as would be required to uh, put in an electric motorcycle so you either saw products which were underwhelming in terms of performance or uh that could uh or a few that could actually perform well but became extremely expensive for the buyer so we wanted to kind of see how we can uh, bridge the gap and that's essentially uh the genesis of our uh, high voltage drive train where we're building india's first or rather in fact at least for the commuter and premium commuter space uh, the world's first high voltage drive train based motorcycles specifically in this price band that uh make electric motorcycles a viable a practical and a lot more fun alternative to petrol powered motorcycles understood and who is this motorcycle for like what kind of customer profile did you have in mind while you were designing your product so our first target group is going to be uh anybody who's looking to buy a 250 to 300 cc equivalent motorcycle uh where we'll be on par in terms of pricing better in terms of performance right uh so uh, anybody today person who is looking to buy their first motorcycle in that mid premium range or somebody who is currently driving a 150 to 100 cc bike over the last 3 5 years who is looking to upgrade to a motorcycle this is probably the best fit for them where this is more in terms of performance style and 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 technology all wrapped up into one piece right you mentioned high voltage architecture so can you help us understand what does high voltage architecture entail sure yeah. so largely today all electric two wheelers operate in uh, in something called low voltage architecture that is anything between 48 to 72 volts um this is uh, uh, largely because of the architecture that we've been borrowing from the 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 eastern markets like china where these products are largely available this uh, architecture is suitable up to a certain level of power which is you know today even elec- many electric scooters uh, are are really pushing the limits of physics to actually you know get the amount of power that they get from the low voltage architecture today but when you look at motorcycle equivalent of power right like an, an average uh, petrol scooter is about 8 horsepower the average uh, petrol motorcycle is about 18 horsepower so that's a significant jump in power for that it 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 doesn't really make sense to adopt a low voltage uh, power train to make put out that level of power what happens is if you do that you generate a lot of heat one you 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 waste a lot of energy and heat and then controlling the thermals of the vehicle also is very difficult this is more or less what happened to cars cars were also about 10 years ago when you look, you remember the small cars that weren't really practical uh, uh, alternatives to petrol powered vehicles these electric cars were on low voltage and then today all electric cars are on high voltage electric is about 300 volts we simply bring the same change to two wheelers thereby the the advantage for the customer is threefold right one the the our vehicles will be as well performing and as much for as fun to ride as a petrol powered vehicle uh, but not just on like short sprints but actually uh, retain this performance for a, a more consistent and and, and stable uh, uh, I mean, more consistent period of time right so uh, that's point number one second is longevity of the co- longevity of components 
given that uh, you know there is a lot less heat uh, generated and uh, uh, the thermal wear and tear on these components is significantly lesser our components are, ex- are also expected to last a very long period of time for example that's why we're looking to give an 8 year or 80000 km standard warranty uh, uh, for our for our motorcycles from day one but third most important or rather the most important item uh, is that uh, today all electric cars in india use a singular charging standard every single electric car that you can purchase today uses a single standard it's called ccs but two wheelers don't have a unified standard at all each electric two wheeler brand has its own proprietary plug which makes it very difficult for our customers um, because we are on high voltage we can now leverage the electric charging infrastructure of electric cars right okay. so there's already about uh, the 13000 odd ccs2 charges in the market today every shell petrol bunk your iocl bunks and uh, you know many malls today on highways ccs charges are already there right mm-hmm. so from day one our customers will be able to leverage those chargers and be able to charge from 20 to 80% in under 36 minutes right from day one so they the range anxiety would no longer be a problem right and when you say high voltage architecture it's a 240 volt architecture is it yes it's going to be 240 volt dc yes okay right so there was one line in your marketing communication that uh, stood out that said technology promise of built like a car so i'm curious to know why does a motorcycle need to be built like a car and what aspects of a car are we talking about here no um uh, amazing question so uh, this is something that uh, you know has been in 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 our dna from uh, from uh, for a while now one is obviously high voltage right uh, the fundamental technology promise is that uh, we believe 5 years down the line every single electric motorcycle in india roads will go high voltage and we want to lead the pack right and high voltage traditionally has high voltage power trains have traditionally been uh only for electric cars uh, this is the first time that's i mean in fact we became the first uh, ev oem in india to certify uh, high voltage back for two wheelers as well so that's more or less uh, why we we say that you know it, it's it's it, it's a motorcycle with el- electric car dna because we're we're adopting technology that was generally built for more higher performance vehicles like cars and bringing it to a motorcycle however it didn't just stop there right even if you look at the vehicle design uh we wanted to we followed an op- approach called uh, maya which is most aspirational yet accessible so where we wanted to build it is there's no reason for us to mimic a petrol powered vehicle a petrol powered motorcycle but at the same time it shouldn't look you know too intimidating that the customer feels okay that looks cool but i don't see myself riding it right so that's why we've taken a, a car like approach where you have larger panels more clean finishes clean surfaces that that gives you a cleaner more elegant look that makes it also pleasing to the uh, to the to the rider so that's the design part of it so cars on technology and cars on design as well okay uh, understood so i'm coming back to the dc charging ccs2 uh, standard so why see for dc charging i understand uh, for two wheelers there are you know everybody has their own uh, plug and design right. still there is some kind of standardization going on for fast charging with type 6 and type 7 uh, so what is why not go for one of those and go for ccs2 i think uh, the the type 6 plugs and the other plugs have less than a few hundred chargers already installed uh, and i think it's still evolving these chargers are largely uh, in you know uh, in the the outlets of uh, of some of these manufacturers they are not really widely accepted yet and it's and it's very unclear on which standard is going to become the default standard right mm-hmm. however ccs has already become the mandate in india for two, i mean for cars and more importantly this is a relatively future proof standard as well so when there's a charging standard that's already in place we i mean at least we didn't believe the need for a new standard to come up and even if it did um, for it to take shape and actually gain momentum is going to take a long period of time But the other interesting point is uh, uh, by doing this we are also kind of uh, able to help uh, fill in utilization uh, gaps at ccs2 outlets as well right and for home charging the regular ac charging works right 
exactly not just regular ac charging but you know today even at home you have to have a separate charger that you have outside and then you have a specific plug right today at for home charging all you need is the type 2 uh, plug that comes with any of your electric cars obviously we'll be providing one cable along with a motorcycle but you don't really have to carry it everywhere because these plugs are going to be uh, like everywhere very very soon right yeah we can take 3.3 today at ac uh, on ac uh, uh, we're at uh, 3.3 kilowatt in ac charging speeds uh, so this gets us from 20 to 80 percent in roughly about 64 minutes uh, a little more than that probably uh in dc charging it's under 40 minutes for uh, 20 to 80 percent um so yeah so the goal is you know um uh, at home or at office you know you plug it in for a couple of hours ideally uh two and a half to three hours and then your battery is 100 percent charged uh but when you do drive into a, a dc fast charger you plug it in for 15 minutes and you get about 50 kilometers of range okay Right. So uh, also, I like to go more into the product development phase. Uh, so I understand that many of the electronic components that are in the vehicle have been in-house designed and manufactured. So can you give us what was the rationale behind that? Because we understand that otherwise, most of the OEMs are sourcing the electronics components from vendors. And so give me a breakdown of uh, what kind of components have been uh, developed and manufactured in house versus what you are sourcing from outside vendors a, a, a decent amount of i mean almost almost all the electronics is is in house so we make our motor controllers in house we make our battery management systems in house we make our chargers in house we make our uh, vehicle control units in house um, we're arguably the most vertically integrated electric vehicle oem in india uh, today uh, this is not because we wanted to this is because we had to like I mentioned, this is the first time that high voltage is being brought to this kind of a cost point ever in the world. So uh, even if I'm looking towards the East or in China or in Europe, I still can't find components uh, that make fit for us. In fact, a couple of years ago, even when we were finding, even if we were looking for uh, sub components that go into some of these, I mean, discrete components that go into some of these components, right? Like components that go into a motor controller. We were not able to really get products at this price range to make it work. In fact, we were working with players like Texas Instruments and uh, Infineon at their engineering sample levels to actually kind of get here. So, so, uh, so yes. So we've had to vertically integrate every component just because there was no, uh, you know, th there was there was no components available in the supply chain ecosystem uh, for our requirement. Uh, uh, and 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 that's one of the reasons we believe that this is uh, 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 something that where where we're leading the pack. And even if tomorrow, let's say, another player comes in with uh, a large amount of funding, it's going to take them at least a couple of years to kind of get into the high voltage drivetrain space for for motorcycles because it's not very easy. Uh, so yes, uh, we make a lot of these components in house. Luckily, we have a strategic investor who also helps manufacture these electronics, and we also make our battery packs in house because. Uh, that's something very critical and we have a lot of IP over how it's assembled and packed. Okay, wonderful. So the packs and the BMS plus a uh, e lot of ECUs are all being manufactured in-house. Yeah. Okay. No, they're not, they're designed and developed in-house. They're not manufactured. I mean, with their contract manufactured with at, at another strategic uh, investor. I mean, we have an EMS uh, investor uh, who manufactures them in Mysore, but, uh, but yeah. So, uh, we so we'll talk about after sales as well so as you know after sales and service has been uh, a major it has always been a major part of vehicle experience but uh, what we see is in fact a lot of leading electric vehicle oems have not been able to crack this yet so how are you are just getting started the vehicles will be coming out two three months from now but how are you planning on that part of the experience uh we're doing one of two things one is uh we're changing the way uh, that uh, service is really looked at for electric vehicles, right? Today, unfortunately, given the current business model around uh, automobiles, dealerships are given, you know, uh, service, uh, how do I say this, uh, targets, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that kind of uh, changes the business model on, or rather the, the experience on how customers are really uh, uh, taken care of. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring, uh, uh, detach these two. We're not, we're not, we don't want to, you know, keep sales and service together. We'll still have 
you know one or two service base in each dealership just to cater to any customer requirements but we want to do majority of the service uh, away from the sales counters right very similar to a white goods approach right where uh, part of it all your all, all your uh, periodic maintenance will be done at the doorstep where we partnered with uh, third party vendors who who go in who who are trained by rapti who go in rapti's uniform replace components that are absolutely required to be replaced uh, for in in terms of periodic maintenance and then uh, you know uh, come back in the case of major component failures these vehicles are picked up from the customer's doorstep brought in two central service hubs and then service for customers right okay. uh, so so that i mean the, the other the other logic behind this is also that uh, servicing high voltage at uh, you know multiple locations also becomes a challenge uh, this way it's safer it it helps us consolidate the the infrastructure for servicing of these components in in into one place in each geography so every geography we enter we'll have one major service hub with multiple touch points so you already have a uh, a manufacturing unit in manapakkam chennai right so uh, what is the current scale of this unit and uh, you also have acquired land uh, in shayar for expansion so tell right. us what is the current scale and how do you plan to expand uh, going further so the the current plant here uh, we have is that our facility which is about roughly about 4 acres in chennai here the maximum production capacity that we can achieve at manapakkam is roughly about 9000 units a month which is about 180000 units a year we are currently at a production capacity of 1500 units a month hmm. right um, once we do reach uh, 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 you know about half of our Uh, our peak production capacity we plan to move into our next facility which will be in chaya where we've got roughly about 41 acres allocated for us mm-hmm. um we will we will essentially be uh, moving production there and then scaling up there as we grow so the first two years of production is expected to be here um end of year 2 we plan to move production to to chaya okay and you've already raised 3 million in pre series a you also have a grant from arai so what does your next funding round look like and what will be the focus of allocating those funds once received no so uh, our previous round was 4.1 million dollars uh, the pr came out before uh, the other the, the rest of the money hit the bank so hence we kind of uh, didn't really mention that but uh, we in total we raised about 5 million dollars in equity and in grants i mean in total uh, we're currently in the middle of a 19 million dollar raise that's 19 million dollars uh, a large portion of that is going to come in from our existing investors we are invested in by uh, two deep tech uh, uh, vcs and a lot of uh, family offices from the manufacturing and transportation space uh, we 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 are expecting a, a large portion of the investment coming in from uh, from them uh, this funding will largely be spent for uh uh you know increasing production capacity and getting our motorcycles to our customers cool. so thank you so much dinesh for your time and uh, i wish you the very best with with your efforts and uh, to actually give boost to electric motorcycle uh, penetration in india we haven't seen it happen so far yet but we hope you can change that thank you no thank you so much thanks a lot priyakshi for your time really appreciate it have a great evening bye bye